So the Zelda series has a sort of tepid history when it comes to their game releases, especially the home console variants. The handheld games slash, you know, top-down Zelda games have always been a bit more consistent, right? Like, A Link Between Worlds came out when it said it was going to come out. Triforce Heroes did as well. So did Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks and A Link to the Past and the original The Legend of Zelda on the Nintendo Entertainment System. But ever since the release of Ocarina of Time, and you got Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild... We've become accustomed to these more third-person action-style Zelda games. These, you know, what we've called over the years the 3D Zelda games have been really tenuous when it comes to release dates. Essentially, a year, a day, a month is announced, and then there's the delay. And sometimes there's another delay. In fact, Zelda games get delayed so often, these sort of 3D ones, that it just becomes expected. And when Tears of the Kingdom was announced for May 12th of next year, in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, okay, this is the first actual announced released year and day for this game. The first. We can say the game's been already delayed, but technically Nintendo never announced anything on when this game was going to come. The first actual date listed is next year, May 12th. And in the back of your mind, you might go, damn, that's the first date. It's being delayed. It'll be holiday next year. Oh no, what if there's new hardware coming? Man, it could get delayed out of next year and become a launch game for the new hardware. So these are the sort of thoughts that have to run through your mind because Zelda's been doing this forever. Twilight Princess was delayed over a year just so it could launch on the Wii. This video is sponsored by E-Win Racing. This bad boy chair right here. They still have some sales going on despite Black Friday being over. And you can use our code Nintendo Prime for an extra 20% off your order. Look, I really love E-Win's products. They're a huge partner of the channel. And honestly, guys, you getting a chair not only gives you something comfortable, it also helps support what we do. So thank you guys so much. And let's get back to the video. And it had an actual release date, month, and year. It was insane. Like, we knew the game was coming. It was going to be a big holiday game. And then it's not. And they were very confident about that release date. It kind of felt like the delay of that game was a last-minute decision almost. But that's the thing. There's a huge history of this. Skyward Sword was delayed. Right? So we've seen this delay stuff happen. Breath of the Wild. Again, another one delayed almost two years. So in the back of your mind, it's hard not to imagine Tears of the Kingdom being delayed. On the other hand, we are currently in the midst of the largest gap in, well, brand new Zelda releases. Yes, we got Link's Awakening on Switch, but that was just more like a remaster remake of an old game. That wasn't a new Zelda game. And you could argue the Hyrule Warriors game if you would like to in there. That's fine. I think it's a really good game, but it's obviously not a mainline Zelda game, even if the story might be canon or not. People debate on that. But either way, it's not a mainline game, right? It's not made by the Zelda team, and it wasn't even commissioned to be a Zelda-style game, right? It's a hack-and-slash spin-off game. But what I find really interesting is now that we are approaching a six-plus-year gap between releases, it makes me go, you know what? Would they really delay this game with that kind of gap? I don't know. But what I do know is that we have an update on the release date. And this update gives me the confidence that this game will not be delayed and will be the first 3D Zelda game, at least in modern history, that won't suffer a delay after its initial announced year or an uh, initial announced release year and day and month and all that. I'm getting this off Nintendo Life, uh, and the headline reads, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has been rated for Nintendo Switch with the subheading, it's happening, everyone, because, I mean, yeah, of course, like, it's kind of a big deal. And just normally, we wouldn't care about these ratings, but it kind of matters in the case for Zelda because it's delayed so often. Twilight Princess wasn't rated back in the day before it was delayed. So, like, it's a big deal to have this rating come through to confirm that this game will be releasing on May 12th. So... This originally came off Gametsu. It says The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has been rated in Korea. Uh, and they have a whole page for it. The rough translation says that the game is suitable for 12 years and up and contains some mild violence. And the description of the game says it's a role-playing game for the Nintendo Switch in which the stage of the adventure to find Zelda expands into the sky. 
So no additional details. Sometimes in these ESRB ratings or other rating boards, we can find like sm small morsels of details that we didn't know, but there's nothing here other than it being a 12 plus rated game that could get it rated T by the ESRB. It's going to be, you know, really up to the ESRB uh, what, what they have here. But to have it rated basically means the game has to be playable from start to finish. It, it, it's a fully playable experience. And at that point, what we're looking at here is just polish, right? From here until release, it's just polish, polish, polish. Getting the game running as best as it can. Getting it to look as best as it can. And fixing any bugs and stuff the QA team might find. You know, those kind of bugs we're seeing in Scarlet and Violet. You know, that kind of stuff. So the game doesn't launch like that. That's what's being worked on now. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, the game is probably complete. Especially since we're getting a rating now. I mean, it really feels like if Nintendo wanted, they could have pushed this to be a holiday release. But with Scarlet and Violet, they probably figured, hey, let's space this out a little bit. Let's drop a big seller right before the summer, you know, right after we start our new fiscal year. And who knows? I know some people think there might be a, a hardware revision launching with it. I don't know that I would go that far, but it's at least in the back of some people's minds. But for me, I'm just happy to see that Tears of the Kingdom is not being delayed. That to me is such a big deal. It really is. It's to a point that the number one thing I worry about with this Zelda game right now is just the content because we've seen so little. The marketing campaign should be starting, I don't know, within three months, you would hope, because it comes out in six. So, uh, look, I, I just need to see more of this game. But for right now, this at least gives me the confidence that it's coming out on May 12th. It's being rated. We're going to start seeing these rating board stuff probably crop up a lot in the next month as all of the other ratings boards out there. The ESRB, as an example, uh, puts their rating. And if there's any notable information in these ratings, we'll let you know. Or if somehow it gets rated T for teens, hey, we'll let you know that as well. Even though in uh, Korea it was rated as 12 plus, which is, you know, just below being rated T for teen. That being said... Uh, I want to thank you guys for being here. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Are you excited for Tears of the Kingdom? Are you still tepid? Are you just waiting for more information on this game? Hopefully this video at least gave you the confidence that it's not going to be delayed because I think that is a reasonable expectation. And I think that this just took that reasonable expectation and just shot a giant arrow through it and said, nope, we're going to be just fine. All right, guys, catch you in the next video.